Okay, man, I am ready. Okay, let's take it from the top one more time, okay? Yeah. You're going to open with the beads up the ass. No, 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 the beads up the ass. I'm what? doing the bald dick thing, and then I'm going to go into the animal farts. Oh, no. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Come in! Hey, hey Newton! <laughs> oh, my God, Mr. Las Vegas, hey. what are you doing here? Well, Robert, I heard you were doing a show, and I just wanted to come over and say, good luck, go kill him, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, man. I mean, you've entertained more people in this city than anybody. I, if you could give me a little advice before I go out there, I'd really appreciate it. Well, sure, kid. I mean, the town's changing a little bit. It's becoming, you know, more family-oriented, so just keep it clean. Okay. Okay? Yeah, thanks a lot. Go get them. Okay. By the way, uh, nice dressing room. Keep it clean? Boy, am I in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Schimmel! Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you, lady. It's, uh, it's great to be here. I love being in Las Vegas. You know, I flew in yesterday, and on the plane, everybody's so excited to come here. I mean, every, all the way. Okay, Las Vegas, here we go. And then on the way home, you know, you're at the airport going, fuck it, I'm never going to come back here again. <laughs> Las Vegas is great. You know, the prostitution is legal in Nevada, so they have, like, weird rules here. Like, you can have an eight-way suck fest up in your room. <laughs> But you can't walk barefoot to the casino. So, it's like you come in from the pool. Hey, where's your shoes? I'm on my way to the suck fest. Okay. Checked into the hotel, got up to my room. They have a little card on my pillow for turndown service. Dial 66. I dialed 66 and this girl got on and said, I wouldn't fuck you for the last guy on earth. I had room service this morning. I had orange juice, pancakes, coffee, 25 bucks. For 25 bucks, I want Mrs. Butterworth to blow me while I'm eating. <laughs> Why do people think you're gonna be happy for them here when they're winning? You're upstairs like, ding, 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 ding. Hey, how about that? Yeah, fuck you. Well, that's my money you're winning there. It's great. They have everything here. Great food, great shows, great every. I went to one of the bellmen. I said, hey, uh, can I get fucked around here? He said, yeah, try the gift shop. <laughs> I'm sure I'm really going to be welcome back here again, huh? <laughs> oh, man, I was in a hotel a couple weeks ago. They had a fire drill, like 3 in the morning. I never heard of this. This thing goes off. Ding, 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 ding. Prepare to evacuate. I just did in my bed two seconds ago. I didn't know what to do. I run out in the hallway naked and I'm standing out there. And then the speaker comes on. This has been a drill. Return to your room. Which would be easy if I had my key with me. But I had to go down to the lobby naked. <laughs> Hi, do you have the key for 225, please? Do you have any identification? Uh, yeah, is this good? That's all I have right now. It's nice to be here. I live in Los Angeles. A couple weeks ago, I was involved in a carjacking, but fortunately, none got on the upholstery. Hey, carjacking. I flew up here on Southwest Airlines on the Shamu the Whale Plane. It's a great fucking idea to have a plane painted like a whale. Because when that goes down in the ocean, that's a real motherfucker to find, let me tell you. When you're trying to get out and a real whale is humping your window. They want you to have a great flight and then they tell you all the things that could happen when you're in the air. In the event of a loss of cabin pressure, a small mask will drop from the ceiling, put it on and breathe normally. Doesn't save you, just make sure you don't smell everybody else shitting in their pants on the way down. This plane is equipped with five emergency exits, not including the big one that'll be created on impact. When everybody flies out like a big jiffy pop. 
In the event of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation device till the sharks come. And then it's a bobber. A little floating appetizer. Shark eats you, eats the cushion, has a little fiber, and has a nice shit the next day. I have a friend that scuba dives. He says, you know what you're supposed to do if a shark's bothering you? Bothering? Well, it's not like they're going, hey, you got 50 cents? He says you're supposed to punch him in the face. Yeah, punch a shark. And then when that doesn't work, you poke him in the eye with your stump. he wasn't even going to attack you? What if he's just curious and he's swimming by and you go, hey, what the fuck? What'd you do that for? I thought you were going to attack me. Yeah, I'm going to now. I was going to let you go, but the other sharks are watching. It doesn't look good now. You know what's weird about plane crashes when you watch the news and they say that people have to be identified by their dental records? Because if they don't know who you are, what the fuck do they know who your dentist is? <laughs> I saw a crash on CNN. They had a guy standing out in the field. Yeah, the plane crashed over here, decapitated this guy. He's apparently dead. Uh, good guess. No, the head's alive by itself. Psst, over here, behind the bush. What would you say if you saw something like that? Hey, you okay? I can't feel my legs. Don't look down. No, your brain might live for a couple seconds after your head comes off. And chickens run around with their heads chopped off. It'd be kind of weird to see some torso hopping around in front of you. Shit, look at that. Hey, that's my shirt. Oh, fuck, my head's off. This is bad. I saw an ad for a Time Life book. A guy jumped out of an airplane, fell 30,000 feet, his chute didn't open, and he lived to tell the story. I would have loved to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Time Life books. We'll send you a book a month until you're forced to file bankruptcy. <laughs> Honey, the garbage disposal doesn't work. That's okay, we can fix it ourselves with volume two, fixing the garbage disposal. Then when that doesn't work, they have volume three, learning to eat with a hook. <laughs> a lot of weird commercials. Sally Struthers with that little kid. Just 55 cents, the price of a cup of coffee feeds this kid and his family for a week. Yeah, where is that? Because I want to move there. <laughs> so that ad for Anusol, have you seen that? You ever have one of those burning itches you can only tell your doctor about? <laughs> Who else can you tell? Citibank, yeah, my asshole burns. <laughs> Who can you tell? <laughs> what do you go to the drugstore? Yeah, my asshole burns. It, it itches and I scratch it, you know, and it burns. Yeah, you, you know, maybe you want to talk to somebody that works here. I was actually picking up a toothpaste. I remember mine burned once. I ate jalapeno peppers or Cajun food. Or, it was really bad. I thought I was shitting battery acid. It burned so bad, I came this close to sticking a popsicle up my ass. The only thing that stopped me was the thought of getting caught. That's that, because... I'd be pretty fucked up if your mom and dad walked in. You know, with company, and this is Robert's room, and you're, ooh, uh, uh, oh yeah, you're the boss, you're the boss. I, mom! Oh no, Ma, it's not what you think. I wasn't fucking myself. A jalapeno burned my asshole, and I borrowed a popsicle from the refrigerator.
I have a dog, I went to the pet shop, I swear, I'm not making this up. They have preparation H for dogs and cats. I love my dog, I'm not rubbing cream on his asshole. I just can't, just, hey, give me a good boy, you like this? What's the dog thinking? Now I know why you're rescuing me from the pound, you pervert. I saw a Tampax commercial. Tampax in a wine glass, open like a flower. What does this tell you? That I'm never having wine at your house. I feel bad for women. You're constantly bombarded with these stupid commercials. They're so dumb, that Summer's Eve verbal douche. How many of those could you watch before you start thinking, geez, maybe I should buy some of that? Herbal? Who thought of herbal? I mean, do you tell your lover you use this? You just surprise him and let him get there and go... <laughs> Pine? <laughs> well, what do you say? Uh, honey, you weren't sliding down the banister again, were you? I think I detect a little lemon pledge, maybe. I... They have this stuff. Summer's Eve, water and vinegar with mesquite. Like, hey, honey, we fucking are barbecuing. What's up? <laughs> herbal douche. My mom uses herbal bathroom freshener. All that does is make it smell like someone's shit in the woods. That doesn't work. You go in the bathroom. Hmm, pine. Ugh, who's shit in here? I like the dad with the mother and daughter walking along the beach. Ma, why do they have douche? Uh, I don't know, ask the pelicans that are following you. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that. Women don't talk like that to their mothers. Uh, if you do, I envy you because I can't talk to my dad like that. Hey, Dad, I took a shower and everything, and my dick still smells funny. Then stop smelling it. What the fuck are you smelling your dick for anyway? Hey, Dad, come here for a minute. Does my dick smell funny, or is it just... You know, Bob, you need some Summer's Eve pina colada dick mist. Now they have condom ads, they have these new condoms, magnums, for the guy that needs a little more. What a great marketing idea. What guy could buy anything but that? Condoms, please? Magnums? Now, nah, take those Tom Thumb rubbers you have over there. Those magnums are too big for me, they fall off. I have to use a twist tie, I don't like it really. I hate condoms. They're hard to put on, they're hard to take off. You try and roll them off, your hair gets caught in it. You have to roll it back, you try and pull it off and that shit flies out and blinds the dog. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joey, come here. No more cream, I don't want any more I don't want cream. Fucking dog. Ray, you come in my face, I'm not even getting laid in the day of the Just got a dog for a pet, he's about 12 weeks old. He already knows to go right to the door. Right after he shits on the rug. Because that's how you train them. They shit on the floor and you go, outside! The dog goes, okay, he wants me to shit on the floor and go outside. That's not a punishment when you kick the dog out. Get out there, you! Hey, this is nice out here. Not like that house, shit all over, it's a fucking mess. I got pissed off, man. I wanted to hit him. I said, don't shit in the house. My wife said, no, Bob, don't hit him. It's not right to hit the dog. Here, you rub the face in the shit. That's how you do it. Yeah. Let's ask him which one he wants. That's why I can't understand people that have Dobermans and pit bulls and Rottweilers. How do you discipline a dog like that? A Doberman? Hey, did you shit over there? Yeah, you got a problem with that? <laughs> no, nah, it's a nice looking shit. And on the rug, too, just the way I like it. <laughs> I have bad luck with animals. I bought my wife a miniature poodle. I took him for a walk. He sneezed and hit its head in the curb and died. <laughs> it was a long drag home. <laughs> we had a rabbit for a pet. My daughter wanted a rabbit. We bought a rabbit. Five days after we have it, it's acting real sick and laying around. And my wife goes, why don't we take him to the vet? So why don't you just let me take him for a drive? I'm gonna take a $5 rabbit to the vet. So we're at the vet, and uh, 
Oh yeah, it's either that or a year's supply of jack-off cream for me. <laughs> the vet wants to put the rabbit in the animal hospital for observation. I swear I'm not making this up. We go back to visit the bunny. It's in a fucking oxygen tent with an IV in its leg. And the doctor goes, I have some bad news for you. Said, Am I wearing an I'm an asshole t-shirt? He said, I think the rabbit slipped into a coma. I'd like to do a CAT scan. I said, pull the plug now, please. I think we're looking at four potential keychains here, maybe. <laughs> we had birds. My wife wanted birds. She said, let's get some finches. They'll mate. The eggs will hatch. It'll be educational for the kids. I buy the finches, get the cage. We go home. These birds aren't fucking for nothing. I'm blowing pot smoke in the cage. I got wine in the water. No, really. I go back to the store. I said, these birds won't fuck. He said, well, do you have that little wicker hutch in the cage? Because they like to fuck in that. It's $29.95. I said, yeah. Do you know the vet from the animal hospital? So I buy the hutch. I go home. They're still not fucking. I go back. I said, hey, they're not doing it. He said, well, finches don't like to do it in captivity. Go home. Open the cage. They're going to fly around the house. Go back into the cage, into the hutch, and then they fuck. I said, you know a little too much about finch fucking for me. <laughs> I go home, open the cage, they fly out across the room, into the wall, and fall down dead. <laughs> and the only one that got fucked was me. <laughs> oh, man. I was watching TV, they had uh, Vander Holyfield on television. They asked him if he would consider coming out of retirement to fight Mike Tyson for 50 million if Tyson gets out of jail. He said, I have to think about it. For 50 million bucks, I'd suck Tyson's dick in front of my parents. <laughs> I would, right on TV, I don't give a shit. Okay, you got a close up of me and the dick here? One million, two million, three million, four million. How bad could a dick taste for 50 million dollars? You could spend a million on mouthwash and have a real nice life. I can only do that joke because I know he's behind bars. <laughs> if you ever heard me, I might have to suck it for free. I did that joke on the other show and this lady came over to me after and she said, oh, come on, every guy has at least one experience with another guy. When you're a kid at camp, you experiment. You jack somebody off your blown, right? What camp is this? What is this, Camp Sukkawami? What are they doing? <sighs> so an ad in the paper today for penis enlargement. They have this big ad. Penis enlargement for men only. Uh, thank you very much. It'd be kind of shitty if your wife had a bigger dick than you. It's a real thing. It costs $3,000. They take 50 cc's of fat from your abdomen, they inject it in your penis, and it's supposed to look real good. So you get older and you wind up with love handles on your dick. <laughs> and you have a whole bunch of new exercises you gotta do. <laughs> One and two and three and four and three. No, honey, I'm not jacking off. It's a new Richard Simmons tape. <laughs> Whack to the oldies. <laughs> guys worry about that. That's two things I think that, that threaten the guy's masculinity the most is when you start losing your hair or the size of your dick. I don't worry about the size of mine because I found out it just makes my hair fall out faster. <laughs> Losing your hair is not that bad, you know. Losing your pubic hair, that would be kind of embarrassing. There's not too many places sell crotch wigs, really. But the commercials would be great, though. Not only am I the president of the company, here's what my bald dick looks like. My wife just bought that new thigh cream, that stuff that reduces your thighs like two, three inches. You don't want to jack off with that shit accidentally. It would be a real disaster. Wind up pissing through a buttonhole. Oh, man. Do you know, when I was growing up, my mom told me that when you masturbate, all your dead relatives are watching. <laughs> but then I figured, who are they going to tell? <laughs> that would be pretty fucked up if they were. And then you die and get to heaven, and your uncle's waiting for you. Hey, Bobby! <laughs> People try a lot of things to spice up their sex life. I took my wife to Frederick's of Hollywood. She wanted to buy edible underwear. I love my wife, but you know, I don't even need her cooking. I'm not eating her panties. 
And it says, now with NutraSweet, like that's what's been holding everybody back. <laughs> Mr. Big Cream, rub it on your dick and your dick gets bigger. Uh, wouldn't your hands get bigger too? <laughs> I mean, I think it would be quite obvious who was using this stuff. Everybody would have like one Mickey Mouse hand. When it <laughs> Inflatable love dolls, she never has a headache. No, but you do after blowing her up. <laughs> I don't like inflatable love dolls, because you know when you're horny and you want to fuck something, you don't have time to blow the doll up. And you can't leave it inflated in the closet, because God forbid you have an aneurysm or something and they find that shit in the closet. <laughs> really not the way you want to be remembered. But you really don't have time with the doll. It's like, you know... This is good enough to fuck the way it is. I, I don't need the arm and the head. I, I could just fold it over and just fuck that. It's just... You don't want the head anyway, because they have that face, that... You never really know how good you're doing with that face, you know? That's why I think they have the new ones with the back door entry, because that way you don't have to see the face. Yeah, backdoor entry. You're fucking a beach ball in the ass. That's real nice. Uh, hey, if you're a good girl, I'll take you out to the pool later. <laughs> they sell weird shit. Vibrating butt plugs. Who invented this? Not even that. Who took it to the patent office? <laughs> Next. Yeah, it's a cone you stick up your ass. Security. <laughs> People do a lot of weird things in bed. You know, when you're horny, you try anything because everything seems like such a great idea. I said, honey, can I go in the back door tonight? She goes, yeah, you can go in the back door. You can go in the garage. You can jump out the fucking window for all I care. Just stay away from my asshole. <laughs> People do a lot of weird things. That's why I think they have prostitutes because if you want to try something and, you know, your wife thinks you're sick, she never forgets it. I mean, if you went, honey, what if I lay in the tub and jack off while you pee on me? <laughs> like, what? I was only kidding, I just wanted to see if you'd do it. <laughs> see, the guy will go, fuck it, okay, that's not gonna happen. But she'll never forget it. I mean, she'll remember that for years. One day you'll be bragging to your friends, you know, about, yeah, I shot an 82 on the course today, and she'll go, tell them about when you wanted me to piss on you. Tell them that story. <laughs> they have porno movies in the hotel here. 8.95. First five minutes free, which is great, because I'm usually done at about two. <laughs> so that gives me three minutes to wash up and change the channel, you know, before. You know what's bad about porno movies in the room when you're checking out and you're at the front desk and they go, okay, that was four nights at $79 a night and you rented Cockmongers twice. Did you want to pay cash for that or you want the Visa card people to know you rented it? I wanted to rent the movie with my dad. I said, hey, you want to rent that movie alive? He said, what's it about? He goes, yeah, it's a it's plane crash and these people eat each other. He said, you know, I have a few movies like that, but there's no plane crash. <laughs> I don't like porno movies, I really don't. They're very distorting and it just ruins everything at home. I thought it would spice up my sex life and it doesn't because women can live up to all the shit the women do in the movies. The guys can't do anything those guys do in the movies. Those guys come like lawn sprinklers. Did you ever see these guys? Over the head, over the shoulders, on the high school diploma. It's all over the fucking... I can't even hit the floor if I aim straight down. It runs up the other side like there's not enough for gravity to kick in. I saw a porno movie with a friend of mine. We saw this guy, John Holmes. This isn't even a dick, it's like a kickstand. I'm like, I got so... I cried more at that movie than I did at Schindler's List. And my friend goes, geez, look at that. He could blow himself. <laughs> yeah, nice to know is the first thing that comes to your mind. <laughs> Get your own popcorn. I'm not sharing with you anymore. <laughs> you know what else they do? They, look, they love to come on women's tits in the porno movies. They really do. And the women always love it. They can't get enough. They're rubbing it in and singing and everything. They're doing the hokey pokey while people are coming on them. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
It's not like that at home when your wife goes, hey! What's the matter with you? Come on, honey, rub it in. <laughs> Fuck you. Get it off. And don't rub it off, get it off. And then you can't be one of those porno guys. Come on, take it all. Because I'm going through the house, the car, and everything. You guys have been a great crowd. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.